Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different aspects of molecular biology in this particular MOOCs course. So, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the cellular structures, we have discussed about the uh, structure and functions of the different types of biomolecules uh, where we have discussed about the DNA, RNA, protein and enzyme and uh, in the previous module we have also discussed about the uh, central dogma of molecular biology. So, we have discussed that how the, the, the different types of uh, cellular activities are dependent on the protein synthesis and how the protein synthesis is being regulated uh, by the level of uh, production of RNA and then uh, by the production of RNA from the DNA. So, when we were discussing about the central dogma of molecular biology, we discussed about that that, that it, it is actually a regulated event of uh, the three different types of activities where you are actually going to have the production of DNA from the pre-existing DNA and this process is known as the replications uh, whereas uh, the, uh, the DNA is actually going to produce the RNA and this uh, process is known as transcription and the third is the trans once the RNA is available then it is actually going to be uh, tra translate into the protein and all these events are being catalyzed by the different types of enzymes. So, replication is being catalyzed by the DNA dependent DNA polymerase whereas, the transcription is being catalyzed by the RNA de uh, DNA dependent RNA polymerase and the uh, translation is being done by the uh, ribosomes. So, in uh, today's lecture, we are going to just start discussing about the first event and then the first event is the, uh, the synthesis of the new DNA from the pre-existing DNA. If you recall, when we were discussing about the cell division, we discussed that uh, uh, during the S phase, the DNA is going to be synthesized and then the, you are going to have the two copies of the same DNA and then these two copies of the same DNA is actually going to be shared between the uh, cells and that is how the cell is actually going to replicate and cell is going to divide. So, uh, synthesis of the new DNA molecule from the pre-existing DNA molecule uh, is known as replications. Now, replication is, uh, is an important event. Uh, uh, because it allows the synthesis of, so replication means the synthesis of the DNA from the uh, pre-existing DNA. This means the, this is going, this you can imagine that this could be a DNA of the parents and this could be a DNA of the offsprings. And you can understand that if there will be any, uh, this, this whole process has to be done with lot of precision, with a uh, with lot of accuracy, so that you are not going to carry uh, the bad information, right. So, you want to carry the same information what is present in this particular DNA and on the other hand, it has to be complete uh, in a given time period. So, replication has the two tasks, one is the synthesis of the new DNA. considering old DNA as template. And the second is it should be accurate. So, there should be, uh, so it should be almost the exact 100 percent replica of the older DNA. There should be no mutations or there be no substitutions there should be no uh, alterations and all that. So, to achieve this, the machinery has to be very robust, machinery has to be very, uh, you know, should have the components so that it should be able to do this job, do the synthesis job, but at the other end, it should also have the uh, components so that it should be able to do a quality checking. And the replication is also related to the genome, right. So, 
uh, prokaryotic genome and the, as well as the eukaryotic genome. If you recall in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the prokaryotic genome and the eukaryotic genome and there is a significant difference between the prokaryotic genome and the eukaryotic genome, right. And as a result, the machinery is also different between the prokaryotic system and the eukaryotic system. So, in the prokaryotic system, uh, we have the different types of components which are required for synthesis of the genome. Whereas, in the eukaryotic systems, because the eukaryotic genome is more complex, you require the different types of machinery. So, because the machinery is different, uh, I have uh, uh, you know uh, splitted this particular thing into two components. So, that you are uh, we are going to discuss first about the prokaryotic replication and then we are actually going to discuss about the eukaryotic replication. Because when we will discuss this in uh, separate or when we are going to discuss about the prokaryotic versus eukaryotic, you will understand that how the uh, machinery is being adopted from the prokaryotic system to the eukaryotic system so that it is more efficient and it is actually uh, bringing the more accuracy in the things. So, the first question comes what is replication? We already discussed right. So, DNA replication is a biological process that helps to transmit the DNA or the genetic information from the generation to generation by producing the two identical DNA strands of the daughter cells from the double standard parental DNA. This anyway we have discussed. What is the importance of replications? Replication is a way of duplicating all the genetic information from the all living parent organism to the daughter organisms, thereby helping maintain the genetic materials in act intactness and the organism survival. Now, if this is such an important event and it uh, mainly de uh, depend on the type of DNA you would like to uh, do the replications and so on, it is important to understand the uh, gen genetic material of the prokaryotic system because we are going to start the replication of the prokaryotic system first. So, uh, prokaryotic genetic material remember that when we were when we have discussed in detail about the prokaryotic replication system, prokaryotic genetic material. So, prokaryotic genetic material is a single chromosome and uh, uh, it is uh, mean uh, mostly been found in the cytoplasm right. So, prokaryotic genome can be found in the cytoplasm, they are negatively supercoiled and circular. Generally, they can be found into a singular number. However, exceptions exist. For example, the Vibrio cholera has the two copies of the genome, right? So, it has the two genomes. Uh, prokaryotes such as E. coli contains a self replicating extracellular genetic material, which is also called as plasmid. So, you have the uh, circular genome right or circular chromosome. So, it is called uh, chromosome right. So, see you have a single copy of the chromosome which is negatively supercoiled and it is a circular DNA and mostly there are only one copy of that circular genome is present in the prokaryotic system, but there are exceptions that in the Vibrio cholera you have the two genomes. Apart from this uh, chromosome, you are also going to have the extra chromosomal self replicating uh, genome and that is called as plasmids. And uh, when we talk about the genetic material, we are actually going to talk about the submission of the chromosome and as well as the plasmids. Now, as far as the plasmids are concerned, uh, plasmids are uh, of small size DNA, it is only in the 1, uh, 1500 to 2000 KB. Therefore, very small compared to the actual prokaryotic DNA. They contains the origin of replications and it replicates independently. So, plasmid does not require any kind of help from the chromosome. They are independent self replicating uh, extra chromosomal genetic material. Now, let us first ask the questions how you can actually be able to have the replications, right. So, there are three different modes which are being proposed if, as far as the replication is concerned. So, replication can be done in the in the three different mode. One is called as the conservative mode, the second is called as the semi-conservative mode and the third is called as the dispersive mode. So, in a conservative mode, uh, conservative mode produces that or uh, if, if it is conservative mode, 
then it produces the two DNA helices from the one single uh, original uh, DNA helix. One helix contains the downright parent's DNA while the other contains the entirely new DNA. Accepted postulate but does not have that much significance. So, what is mean by the conservative mode is that from the parental DNA you are going to have after replications. So, if you are going to do the replications you are going to generate. So, for example, from the two strands you are going to have the four strands right. So, four strands are actually going to be uh, segregated and as a result you are going to have for example, here you have one and two. So, that one and two will go into the parents whereas, the newly synthesized three and four will go into the daughter. So, as this is called as the conservative mode. In a conservative mode there will be no mixing of the content from the uh, parents DNA. So, there that is why in the second round of replications you are going to have the parent DNA and you are also going to have the daughter DNA separately. This means there will be no mixing of the previous copy and it is actually going to have the pure DNA present in the parent DNA. Then the second mode is called as semi conservative. So, one of the two helices forms each containing the one new and the one parental strands. According to the Watson and Crick, one strand serves as a template during the replication uh, mode. Mostly accepted postulate as the DNA polymerase needs a strand to form a new complementary strand. So, what is mean by the semi conservative mode is that from the parent DNA for example, you have the parent DNA as 1 and 2 it is actually going to do the replications and once you do the replications it is actually going to form the 4 copies right 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, 1, 2 is the original copy. 3 and 4 is actually going to be the newly synthesized copy because the 1 from the 1 you are going to have the copy number 3 from the 2 you are going to have the copy number 4. Now, in the in the semi conservative mode the 1 is actually going to make a pair with 4 and the 2 is actually going to make a pair with 3. So, this is actually going to be 1, 4 and 2, 3 right. This means there will be a dilution of the genetic material of the parents and that is how the parents are actually going to share the 50 percent copy with the offsprings. That means, the uh, two offsprings what are going to be produced after the first replication or the two DNA molecule what is are going to be formed after the uh, first replications are actually going to have the mixture. It means going to have the 50 percent from the parents and the 50 percent of the newly synthesized DNA. And in the, this continues because even if I have a second replication discontinued right and uh, you are going to have the that kind of dilutions right. Uh, so, in the first replications you are going to have the mixing of the DNA from the parent DNA. So, you are going to have the two strands of the parents which are going to be diluted. Now, the third method is called as the dispersive. So, this mode generates the DNA helices with the alternating pattern of the old and the new DNA segments and it does not have any kind of biological significance. So, what this means is that it is in the dispersive what we it says is that you are going to have the parental DNA and after the replications uh, 50 percent portion is going to be replicated with the original DNA and the 50 percent portion is going to be replicated in the uh, with the uh, new DNA. So, this means you are going to have a mixture of the both the strands and uh, even the both components. This is uh, not acceptable because it is not possible because when you have the uh, copy number 1 and 2 you are going to have the generation of the 3 and 4. You are not going to have the 1 and followed by 3 and followed by 1 followed by 3 like that. So, that kind of a scheme is not possible because once the DNA polymerase will sit and start synthesizing the DNA it will not come off and if it comes off then um, it is actually not going to have this particular type of pattern. So, this is, uh, is the most unacceptable method. Now, the question is we have the three different modes right. We have the conservative mode, we have the semi conservative mode and we have a dispersive mode and these are the three different types of model what has been proposed how the replication is going to happen right. But the question comes how scientifically we can be able to prove this. 
So, to prove this, the there is a simple experiment and a classical experiment what is being done by the some of the scientists. So, the Meselson star or Matthew Meselson and Stahl actually performed the experiments where they have asked what would be the mode of application in the bacterial system. So, what was the aim? The aim was to establish which method is applied into the prokaryotic replication. Is it the uh, conservative mode or semi conservative mode or the dispersive mode, right? Uh, so, to ask these questions, uh, they have prepared the, uh, they have designed an experiment, right? And they, these are the requirements. So, you require a media, you require a media to grow the E. coli for several generations. And the media is uh, having the two different types of media. You are going to have the media with the standard form of uh, nitrogen that is the N14. So, I will say this is the normal uh, nitrogen that is the N14 nitrogen and then you also require a medium with the rare and the heavy form of nitrogen and that is called as N15. So, these are the two different types of isotopes what you can actually use. One is the uh, normal, normal nitrogen or the heavy nitrogen and then you can actually be able to uh, you, you require the analytical reagents right. So, you can actually require the uh, techniques so that you can be able to separate the DNA what is being formed by the N14 versus N15. So, you require a cesium chloride gradient to get the separate DNA based on their density. Remember that this is heavy and this is light. So, it is actually going to have the different types of densities and that is why N14 can be separated from the N15 It is if it is present in the same mixture. So, if you have the pure DNA it is of the N14 or the pure DNA of N15, it is go going to be formed the different bands into the cesium chloride gradient uh, mixture. And uh, if you are not sure about the gradient uh, certifications, remember that we have already discussed that technique while we were discussing about the uh, cell cellular fractionations and we have discussed about the density gradient certification. So, uh, there we I think we have taken an example of the sucrose, but here we are they are using the cesium chloride. So, that is the only difference and uh, you know that the gradient can be up uh, in the in the upward direction or the downward directions. And we have also discussed in detail about the principles and how the things are getting separated when you are running them onto the gradient. So, gradient is actually going to separate the molecule based on the their density. So, this is the procedure what you are going to follow, right? Uh, you are going to grow the culture of E. coli N15 isotope media for several generations so that the heavy isotope is incorporated into the purine and pyrimidine bases. Remember that both or most of the nitrogenous bases are uh, made up of, of the N15. So, you when you grow them into N15 media, uh, all your purine and pyrimidines are actually going to be get labeled. This means all the nitrogen what is present as N14 is actually going to be replaced by the N15. So, all the DNA is going to be heavy DNA. And then some of the E. coli from the heavy isotope media is taken and transferred into the normal media containing the N14 as the nitrogen source. So, now what will happen is that when it is going to synthesize the new DNA molecule, it is has to utilize this N14, right. So, based on the density gradient, the DNA band will be generated into the centrifuge tubes. For equilibrium density gradient analysis, the DNA are collected from the media and put it into the 6 molar cesium chloride. DNA sample in heavy salt gradient are taken into centrifuge for 50 to 60 hours at 1 lakh G rotations. So, this is what exactly going to happen when you are actually going to have the E. coli into the N15 media you are going and when you run them onto the onto the, uh, the cesium chloride density gradient, what you will see is that it is actually going to form a separate band and this band is for the N15. 
Whereas, when you are going to transfer that into the N14, you are going to have the uh, bands which is of the intermediate density. So, this is the band, this is the region wh where you are going to get the band for the N14 and this is the region for the N15. So, when you are going to grow the media, when you are going to grow the bacteria into the normal media after N15 media, it is actually going to have the N15 uh, uh, a band into the intermediate spin, right? Intermediate position. It is not going to be related to the N15 or the N14. Now, if you grow the further, right? If you go for several more generations, then what will happen is that you are actually going to start getting the band which is corresponding to the N14, which means that there will be some DNA what is going to be served as the template of the N14 and that is how it, you are going to have the intermediate DNA, but you are also going to have the N14. Now, this will continue and that is how this is going to be the final product. So, uh, if you are only growing the bacteria into the heavy media, you are going to have the single band at the N15, but you if you are running it at the uh, into the N14 media, so the DNA is initially being N15. So, N15 DNA is being transferred into the eco, right, N15 labeled DNA containing bacteria when you put it into the normal media, it is going to have the 50 percent N14 and 50 percent N15 and as a result after the first generation you are going to see a band which is intermediate density. So, this is actually N14 by N15 media right and uh, this is going to be the intermediate DNA. Now, if you continue the for the several more generations, then it is actually going to form the N14 uh, dimers and as well as the N14 and N15 intermediate. So, it is actually going to form the intermediate DNA band and as well as the N14 light bands. And this will continue because this is the actual thing, right. So, this remember that when we were talking about the semi conservative mode, what we said is that if you have this DNA, right, and you have the two strands right? one and two and after the replication what will happen is that it is actually going to form the four strand right. It is going to form two strands and it is going to form the four strands right. So, one is going to make a pair with four and two is going to make a pair with three. This means the, the so imagine that this is N15. So, if this is N15, so this is going to be N15, this is going to be N15 right. Now, here uh, the new DNA what is going to be formed is not going to be N15 because there is no N15 available into the media, right. So, what will happen is that the N one strand which is going to be N15, the other strand is going to be N14, right. And uh, same is true here, right, N15 and N14 and that is why it is actually going to give you a intermediate density. Now, if this will go for another generation, then this N14 is going to replicate, this N14 is going to replicate and N15 will again going to have another copy. So, this is actually what happen is that when you are going to have another uh, replication, then N14, N14 and you are going to have the 4 DNA molecule, right. So, you are going to have the N15 as an N14, right. So, 2 copies of this and you are going to have the two copies of this, right. So, he, this is actually going to give you a band which is corresponding to the N14 and this is your, this is going to give you a band which is for the intermediate. So, that is how you are going to get this actually here in the uh, subsequent generations. So, what you can conclude from this is that whenever you there will be a DNA applications, it is actually going to be impure, it is going to give you a DNA which is impure. So, it is going to have the uh, original copy and it is also going to have the new copy. So, out of these three proposed replication mode, the semi conservative mode is the selected mode that can be observed into the prokaryotic system and as well as the eukaryotic system. Now, let us talk about the replication machinery. So, first is what is replicon. So, replicon is the region of the DNA what is going to be uh, participate into the replication reactions. So, replication replicon or the small stretch of DNA which is going to be involved into the replication is a DNA segment of the prokaryote that undergo replications. Replicants what is there in the replicon? So, replicon is going to have the origin of replication and it also going to have the 
terminations regions. For example, the E. coli has one replicon on its genome, so it is going to be monoreplinonic, which means it is going to start from one side and it is going to end on to the one side. So, it is going to have the monoreplonic. Whereas, the eukaryotes have the multiple original replication and hence they are multi replonic. So, this means if it is a uh, equal if, if it is a eukaryotic region eukaryotic uh, genome then you may have the multiple origin of replications and uh, why it is so because the origin the eukaryotic genomes are big compared to the prokaryotic genome. So, they can actually afford to grow with go with the single uh, origin of replication. So, that by the time the replication is going to be over they are also going to have the as, uh, the synthesis and the other kinds of preparations. So, let us first talk about the origin of replications. So, origin of replications as the name suggests one the origin of replication represent the starting point of the replication in the prokaryotes. It is approximately 245 base pair 80 rich region cis acting sequences. Uh, what is mean by the six acting sequences? Six acting sequences is that they can affect only the molecule of the DNA in which they reside. So, cis acting means they are actually going to affect within that molecule. Uh, now, second question is why it is AT rich? So, AT rich sequence is preferred because AT rich is easy to uh, melt. We know that the A is making a two base pair with T whereas, G is making three base pair with C. So, if you have the G into G C regions then it is you are supposed to break the three hydrogen bonding and it is difficult to break the three hydrogen bonding compared to the two hydrogen bonding. So, for melting or unwinding of duplex DNA less energy is required to break the hydrogen bonding than the G C sequences. Melting of duplex DNA is ATP hydrolysis dependent as the energy released helps break the hydrogen bonding between A and T. Above mentioned AT rich sequence is recognized by the enzyme which is called as DNA helicase to initiate the unwinding process. So, this is the typical uh, original replications where you are going to have the 200 base pair 245 base pair long stretch and it is going to have the AT rich region in the, uh, uh, the in the region and uh, it is going to have the DUE and DOR. DUE means the duplex unwinding element whereas, DOR is called as DNO oligomerization. transitions. So, the origin of application in E. coli is known as the OREC. It contains the two short, uh, short uh, repeat motifs like five copies of the nine mer uh, sequences spread throughout the origin of replications DOR site serve as the DNA binding site of the DNA A which is a replication initiation protein and the three copies of the 13 base pair or 13 mer 80 rich repeat which is uh, called as DO site where the DNA starts unwinding. So, upon binding of DNA A at the 9 mer region the 13 mer region starts melting ok. So, origins ORI of C contains the 11 copies of 5 prime GATC 3 prime repeat methylated on the adenyl on both strands and only complete methylation can lead to the initiation of replications. Hemimethylated origins cannot initiate the replication until it is fully stored or methylated. So, this is important that um, the methylation is also going to control the replications because remember that the methylation is the defense mechanism right. So, uh, we are going to discuss about some of these enzymes right. So, uh, which are uh, I think going to be used in the molecular cloning. So, restation enzyme restation methylase system is a, is a kind of a defense system right and uh, that is how the machinery is not going to initiate the replication until the DNA is fully methylated. If the DNA is not methylated, uh, hemimethylated or unmethylated then it is not going to be replicated because it is considered to be a uh, host, uh, it is going to be considered to be uh, replicate uh, DNA of the external origins. Then we have the replication fork, so replication fork is going to be formed and that is how it is actually going to initiate. So, once the DNA is being melted at the original replication it is going to form the replication fox. So, the Y shape structure is generally found uh, when the DNA starts melting and opening up. As the DNA open up bidirectionally at the origin of C two replication fox are generated 
uh, extension of the two oppositively directed replication fork leads to a replication bubble. So, when the replication fork moves in this direction and as well as in this direction, it opens the DNA in both the direction and as a result it is actually going to form a bubble like uh, situation right. Replication fork is going to move in both this direction and this is going to be called as replication bubble and this replication bubble will move in both the direction. Uh, where it is actually going to start synthesizing the new DNA. So, this is going to serve as a template for the uh, this, uh, this machinery and this is going to be serve as the rep machinery for the this replication. So, you are going to have the one machinery which will run in this direction and there are going to have another machinery which will run in this direction. So, and that is how it is actually going to have the replication of the both the origins uh, both the Sites. So, you are going to have the replication in this direction and you are going to have the replication in this direction. To maintain the single standard situation, the single standard DNA binding proteins are going to code the single standard DNA to prevent the rewinding of the double standard DNA. So, these are the uh, some of the uh, components what are going to be present within the DNA structure. So, you are going to have the replication, uh, original replications and then you it is going to form the replication forks. Apart from this, you also require a, a battery of the uh, machinery what is being uh, formed or what is being assembled onto the uh, replication fork to uh, start the replications. So, these are the some of the important enzyme what is being uh, found into the uh, prokaryotic replications. So, first enzyme is the DNA helicase or helicase right. So, it is called as DNA B it melts or open up the DNA at the replication fork. So, it is going to be the first enzyme which is going to be sit at the origin of replications and then it is actually going to start the opening up the DNA. Then the second is the single standard DNA binding proteins and these are the uh, they will prevent the unwinding of the single standard DNA to the double standard DNA. So, you can imagine that as soon as the bubble is going to be formed the single standard DNA binding protein will go and sit onto the nucleotide so that they should not have any kind of interaction. Remember that these two uh, molecules are complementary to each other. So, as soon as they get open they are supposed to be remain like that so that the other molecules will come and sit and do their jobs. But if you do not do that then they will come and stick to each other because your know, every A is going to have a you know. Uh, complementity to T and every G is going to have the complementity to C. So, this complementity can only be break if you have a molecule which is sitting onto this right. So, that is how you are going to have no interaction between these two and that is how they are going to be remain separated and then the other machinery will come and sit and start the replications. Then you also have the topoisomerase or DNA G. So, topoisomerase works at the region ahead of the replication fork to prevent the supercoiling. And then you also have the DNA pol 1 or it is also called as the Kornberg enzyme because the Kornberg is the first uh, uh, scientist who discovered the DNA pol 1. So, the first DNA polymerase to be discovered in E. coli by the Nobel Prize winner Arthur Kornberg and the gene what is actually coding the uh, DNA pol 1 is called as pol A and it is a monomeric protein of 928 amino acid or the uh, 109 kilo Dalton and it has three different types of activities. It has a 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity, it has a 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity and it also has a 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity. So, remember do not worry about these activities because that anyway we are going to elaborate or going to discuss when we are going to talk about the other events. So, these three activities are very really important. This activity is important for the DNA synthesis and other two activities are required for the proofreading and as well as the other kinds of activities. DNA polymerase 1 or the Kornberg enzyme is having the 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity is independent of the other activities. Then the, we have the protease cleaves polymerase 1 into the two fragments right. So, if you treat the DNA pol 1 with the protease like trypsin then it is actually going to generate the two distinct fragments. Uh, you are going to have the larger C terminal fragment or it is called as clero fragments 
which contains both the 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity and 3 prime to 5 prime exonucleus activity. And then you are also going to have the smaller fragment which has the proof, read acti proof reading activity that is the 5 prime to 3 prime exonucleus activity. So, uh, Clino fragment is also very important and very popular in terms of the in vitro uh, replication such as the PCR. So, sometimes people are using the clino fragments rather than the uh, complete enzyme because uh, the with the complete enzyme you have the always a danger of you having the 5 prime to 3 prime exonucleus activity and that may actually have the interference in terms of the uh, rap DNA replication under the in vitro conditions. So, uh, it has a low processivity which means uh, only the 200 nucleotides uh, can be processed. Then it also has a low polymerization rate. So, it has uh, uh, around 20 nucleotide can be added at the per second and the apart from these you also going to have other kinds of activities with uh, associated with the DNA pol 1 that is the RNA primer removals, gap filling and the DNA repairs. These three are actually going to be discussed in detail when we are going to talk about the uh, elongations and terminations. And it is actually a metallo enzyme, so it is actually a zinc dependent en uh, enzymes. Then we also have the DNA pol 2, so monomeric protein with pol B as a structural gene, it is a uh, size of the 90 kilo Dalton. DNA pol 2 having the uh, two activities uh, 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity and 3 prime to 5 prime exonucleus activity. It has a low polymerization uh, that is the about 40 nucleotide per second and it also has the low processivity rate such as the 1500 nucleotides. It mainly serve as the alternate DNA repair polymerase therefore, it can be replicate DNA if the template is damaged it does not require ATP for any type of its activity. Then you also have the DNA pol 3. So, DNA pol 3 is a primary DNA replicase with the structural gene pol C and it has a 900 kilo Dalton. It is a multimeric protein complex of 10 different protein polypeptides such as alpha, epsilon, theta, z, tau, y, uh, sigma and all that right. Um, it has the high polymerization rate about uh, 1000 nucleotides per second and it has high processivity that is the 50,000 nucleotides. And DNA polymerase third uh, serves as a holoenzyme during the replications and holoenzyme refer to the multi protein complex whose catalytic activity is associated with the extra components. Then we have the DNA pol 3. So, this is the structure of the DNA pol 3 and you can see that all these uh, components are assembled to form this particular enzyme. And uh, there are four essential components. Uh, you have the two copies of the catalytic core that is the alpha subunit and the epsilon subunit. Alpha subunit has the 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity, whereas the epsilon subunit has the 3 prime to 5 prime exonucleus activity, whereas the theta subunit is for increasing the efficiency of the, uh, 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 of the epsilon subunit two copies of the dimerization component that is the tau and the two copies of the homodimer of beta subunit ring for the processivity component and the one copy of the clamp uh, lo loaders and these are the enzymes uh, these are the subunits what are present in the clamp loaders. And how it is actually going to do the DNA polymerizations? So, the clamp loader links the two catalytic cores and the two beta clamps. Uh, increases the positivity of the DNA pol 3 holoenzyme and the loading of clamps are done by the clamp loaders and the dimer component helps the catalytic cores to function at the same time. Then we have the DNA polymerase uh, 4 and DNA polymerase 5. Both are the Y family polymerase that do not have the 3 prime to 5 prime exonucleus activity. It has a low catalytic efficiency and a low processivity and fidelity. It is involved in the uh, transition uh, synthesis and replication damage DNA by the bypassing the nucleotide that can block the progression of a replication fork. And it is been synthesized by the structural gene like the DIN B and the UMU D2C or the Pol 5. Then we also require the DNA primase. So, DNA primase is required for the synthesis of RNA primers complementary to the strands. Then you also require the DNA ligase, seal the DNA fragment gap into the strands. 
Now, uh, there are three major events what is going to happen when you are going to have the DNA applications. So, uh, you have the uh, first stage that is called as the initiation, the second stage which is called as elongation and the third stage which is called as termination. So, the first stage is going to have the recognition and starting of the replications. Then the elongation you are going to have the replication fork leads the DNTP synthesis and the proofreading and the third is termination where you are going to have the stopping of the replications. So, E. coli chromosome DNA is circular with no free end and it is replicated bidirectionally. Therefore, it resembles the Greek letter theta. Hence, this replication mode is also known as the theta replication. It can be seen in the gram negative bacteria such as proteobacteria, some commonly used plasmids like col E1, RK2, F and P1 bacteriophage as well. So, this mode of replication which is called as theta replication is being found into the prokaryotic system and as well as the plasmids like col E1, RK2, F and P1 bacteriophage as well. So, uh, these are the some of the steps into the initiation. So, initially the 2 to 4 DNA A protein um, using the ATP binds to the 9-mer DOR region in the ORIC performing the initiation complex. Once this is done, it is going to enter into the second stage where the DNA coils around the DNA A multiple copies which leads to the topological stress and once the topological stress is being generated, it is actually during the presence of the in the presence of ATP the DNA A influences the 13 mer 80 rich DUE region to start melting and once the DUE region is start melting, the further melting is carried out by the recruiting hexamer protein which is called as helicase or the DNA B. DNA B helicase clamps around each of the two single standard strands of the DUE site of the origin of C or C and the clamping of DNA U is supported by the clamp loader. DNA C, they make the DNA B, DNA C complex and that is how the it is going to have the initial melting of the DNA at the original replication and that is how it is actually going to form the uh, replication fork and the replication bubbles. Uh, then we have the DNA C which is going to open up the DNA B ring and helps in placing the ring around the single standard DNA at the origin. While DNA B moves forward with the help of the ATP hydrolysis, the single standard DNA binding protein covers the single standard DNA to prevent the unwinding and single standard DNA bind cooperatively in a sequence dependent manner, sequence independent manner. So, single uh, SSBs are actually going to bind the nucleotides and that is how they are actually going to uh, uh, destroy the affinity of the complementary strands and that is how it is actually going to keep the strands into the single standard DNA. Then we have the next is DNA B recruits the DNA G which is uh, called as RNA primase to synthesize the RNA primer on both the, the both the strands which is called as leading strand or the lagging strands. So, and then we are going to have the RNA primer which is influences the DNA C to release the DNA B from the uh, site right. And to initiate the elongation phase the primosome uh, prim uh, formation occurs and uh, as a result it is actually going to synthesize the primers. And the primosome is actually a functional complex which is going to have the DNA G, DNA B and SSB and some of the accessory proteins. So, uh, in the initiation exactly what will happen is that you are actually going to have the binding of the some of the components at the DU site and some of the component at the DOR site. Once these two sites are actually going to be occupied by the initiation factors DNA B and other kinds of proteins, then you are going to have the recruitment of the uh, helicase and uh, helicase is actually going to be uh, a, is a uh, hexagonal protein. So, it is actually going to run in the both the directions. So, it is going to run in this direction and this is going to run in this direction and that is how it is actually going to form the replication bubble. And once it is going to be formed, it is going to allow the, the binding of the single standard DNA binding protein and that is how it is actually going to allow the binding of the primase and that is how there will be a synthesis of the primers. and uh, 
one replication, one fork, uh, fork will run in both the directions and that is how it is actually going to have the one other strand which is called going to be called as leading strand, the other strand is going to be called as lagging strands. And once this initiation stage is over, then it will enter into the elongation stage. So, what is the basics of the elongations? So, mainly the DNA pol 3 does not uh, does the polymerizations. Chain elongation happens by the free 3 prime OH primers attacking the alpha phosphoryl group of the incoming TNTPs as a product byproduct of the reaction as mentioned earlier the pyrophosphate is going to be generated. The bond formed between known is as the phosphodiester bonds and that is how it is actually going to start adding the nucleotides based on the base pairing information. So, once you have the Watson Crick base pairing information which is going to be available through the DNA pol 3, it is going to be keep adding the nucleotides and these keep nucleotides are going to be coupled with each other by the phosphodiester linkage and the pyrophosphate is going to be released and this pyrophosphate is going to be uh, get hydrolyzed by the pyrophosphatase and that is also going to generate the energy which is going to be utilized into the process. Uh, in this case, there are two replication forks uh, generated in the, for the prokaryotic that moves in the opposite direction for each other. Replication forks uh, proceeds bidirectionally at a speed which is 1000 base pair per second per fork both the leading and the lagging strands are replicated simultaneously. What is the leading strand? The DNA polymerase 3 synthesizes the strand from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction continuously towards the replication fork. So, one fork is running in the direction of the 5 prime to 3 prime, the other is running in the reverse direction that is the in the uh, reverse order right and that is what is called as lagging strand. So, in the lagging strands the synthesis happen in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction, but the discontinuously away away from the replication fork. So, if you have a bubble right and uh, if this is a bubble right and uh, if the replication is going in this direction, machinery is going in this direction, then this is going to be the leading strand and this is going to be lagging strand because it, it will wait for this uh, region to be available to get open and then only it is actually going to do the synthesis in the reverse direction and that is why this is going to be called as the lagging strand and this is going to be called as the leading strands. So, there are three different stages of the elongations right. So, DNA B helicase separate the two DNA molecules binding to the lagging strands template at the replication forks and moving along according to the polarity of 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Now, DNA G the primase associated with the DNA B and synthesizes the RNA primers complementary to the associated single standard strands. Interaction between the DNA B and DNA G regulates the Okazaki fragment length. Tighter association results in more frequent short uh, fragments whereas, the loose interaction will produce a longer front end on lagging strands. Uh, length of the Okazaki fragments could vary between the 1000 to 2000 nucleotides. Formation of replisome. So, it contains the DNA pol 3 holoenzyme and the associated protein like the DNA B and the DNA J, uh, DNA G. This replisome starts the joining of the DNDPs by forming the phosphodiester bonds. DNA pol 1 uh, removes the RNA primers of both the strands by the uh, 5 prime to 3 prime uh, exonuclease activity, which generates a gap after the primer remover in the both the strands. DNA pol 1 also fill in the gap between the lagging strand fragment after the primal remover. Lastly, the leftover nicks are sealed by the help of DNA ligase with the help of the NAD plus as a uh, energy source. So, this is what exactly going to happen in the replications elongation stage. So, in the elongation stage what will happen is that you are going to have the replication fork which is moving in this direction right. So, this is going to be considered as the leading strand and this is going to be considered as lagging its end. So, once this uh, portion is going to open, then the synthesis is going to start from this direction right. So, it is going to happen in this direction. Whereas, in the case of leading strand, because the synthesis always occurs in the in the direction of 5 prime to 3 prime and so it has to wait for the 3 prime to be available for making a primer and that is how it is actually going to be in, diff, uh, in the opposite direction and that is why this strand is going to be called as lagging strand and this strand is going to be called as leading strands. 
Now, what is the role of guidase in the uh, elongation? So, due to the unbinding of with the help of the DNA helicase, the double stranded DNA in front of the fork become positively supercoiled. If the supercoiling increases, the fork will halt. Therefore, to overcome the halting from the supercoiling, topoisomerase are needed. In E. coli, the DNA guidase, the type 2 guidase was discovered by the scientist called as Martin Gellet. And uh, guidase contains the two different subunits, guide A which contains cut and rejoin the DNA and guide B which is uh, responsible for providing the energy by the ATP hydrolysis. Uh, then we also have the proofreading activity because when you are doing our uh, DNA replications, it is possible that the DNA polymerase could add the some nucleotide which may not be match which may not be as per the information available onto the template and in that case there is a proofreading activity required right because when you are synthesizing a product it has to go into the uh, into into a testing stage or it's going to be get into a stage where you should test whether the product what you are synthesizing is of, of good quality or not so proofreading activity is going to ensure that there is a uh, sequence what is being produced is exactly identical of the template. So, DNA replication is, uh, uh, is amazingly accurate with one error in 1 billion nucleotides incorporated. This above mentioned tolerated mutant level is desired for the large genome size especially. DNA polymerase carried out the process by their 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity. When an inaccurate nucleotide is incorporated, the synthesis rates get reduced due to the wrong positioning of the 3 prime OH. This works like one delete key removing only the most recent error. So, what happen is that when you are actually synthesizing and synthesizing it keep going and keep checking whether the uh, attachment what I have made is actually making a pair with the template or not. So, if it is not then it is actually going to go back and it is going to do the corrections. Now, the third process is called as the terminations. As there is a bidirectional replication, the fork will melt at a position diametrically opposite to the ORC on the genome. Termination region uh, contains multiple copies of 23 base pair long sequences or ter sequences. Every ter sequence act as a recognition site for a protein which is called as TUS, so termination utilization substrate proteins. TUS ter complex allow one replication fork to pass if it is moving in a one direction, but blocks the progression if it is from the opposite direction. The directionality depend on the TERS protein localization on the DNA helix. Uh, in E. coli, the orientation of the TERS TER complex is such that it ensure both the folks movement will be stopped at or near the same point. After the complete replication process, the, the new two circles are physically interlocked or catenated. This decatenation is carried out by the topoisomerase 4 to generate the separate two daughter DNA, double standard DNA molecules. So, uh, termination is being done by the places where you are going to have the ter sequences and uh, these ter sequences are going to be recognized by a protein which is called as the TUS and or the termination utilization substrate proteins and the TUS and the ter is going to form a complex allowing only one replication to fork to pass. But if there are two replication forks which are you know going to reach to that particular point and they will try to bypass then it is actually going to halt the replications. Now, let us talk about the summary of the things what we have discussed so far right. So, there will be and what will be the difference between the replication between the prokaryotic and as well as the eukaryotic system. So, uh, in the initiation you are going to have the DNA A which is actually going to participate. So, you are going to have the initiation reactions where you are going to have the uh, DNA A whereas, in the prokaryotes you are going to have the protein which is called as ORC. Uh, then you also going to have the activity of helicase which is going to unwind the DNA and uh, it is going to be DNA B. Then that is being done by the MCM complex in the eukaryotic system. Then you are going to have the helix, helicase loader that is going to be DNA C whereas, uh, the same function is being done by the CDC 6 and CDT 1. Uh, you do not have to worry about all these proteins because when we are going to talk about the eukaryotic replications, we will discuss all these. 
Then the single standard DNA binding proteins, uh, it is going to be prokaryotic SSBs, uh, whereas in the case of eukaryotes, it is going to be RPA. And then we have the primase, so it is going to be DNA G in the case of prokaryotic system, whereas in the case of eukaryotic system, you are going to have the Paul alpha primase. And then we have the primase, uh, polymerase, so you are going to have the DNA Pol3 which is the main polymerase uh, required for the uh, replication in the prokaryotic system whereas in the case of eukaryotes you are going to have the DNA Pol3 delta and the poly DNA Pol epsilon. Uh, clamp uh, you are going to have the beta clamp whereas in the case of the pro eukaryotes you are going to have the PCNA ring. Then we have the clamp loader, uh, so you are going to have the gamma complex whereas in the case of the eukaryotes you are going to have the RFC. Then we have the ligase, ligase is required for you know joining the uh, uh, lagging strands right. Uh, so it is going to be a DNA ligase uh, whereas in the case of eukaryotes it is going to be a DNA ligase 1. Then we require the primase removal, so primase removal is being done by the DNA Pol1 or ribonucleus H in the case of the prokaryotes whereas in the case of the uh, eukaryotes is going to be done by the RNAs H or FEN1. So these are the some of the um, components what are being different between the prokaryotic system and the eukaryotic system. And what we have discussed so far, we have discussed about the DNA uh, replication machinery in the prokaryotic system, we have discussed about the origin of replications, features of the origin of replication and so on. So in a subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss some more aspect related to the prokaryotic replication. Thank you.